Hello and welcome to part two. So as a matter of review, we have a target with a RIC frame on it. RIC is radial in-track cross-track, up, forward, sideways. Um, that's probably not a mathematical definition, but pretty cool anyway. Um, we are now, we're gonna remain in geo orbit and we're gonna place our nifty little chaser 260 kilometers ahead of the target in the same orbit. So uh, that's how we're starting out. So we've added a little distance between the chaser and whereas before we were looking at radial, radial delta Vs and the resultant motion, which creates a natural motion circumnav, um, which is a two by one ellipse. It's uh, really cool, very popular. Um, we are now gonna look at what happens if you do an in-track delta V. Uh, I call these phasing orbits. You, you change the eccentricity and the orbit period and it enables the chaser to relocate relative to the target. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's begin, I'll get my laser pointer going. That's really cool, that little red dot. Okay, so here's the chaser, here's the target. They're orbiting on the black line orbit, everything's cool. They're separated by 260 kilometers, which is about a third of degree in uh, longitudinal arc out there at GEO. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the throttle. There's the fire coming out. You hear the sound, it's really cool. Um, that delta V, that addition of one meter per second to the whopping 3.07 kilometers per second is illustrated by this vector here, this little red thing. So now the new motion is the blue orbit. So from the uh, looking down from the way north, we have the, the blue orbit. And look what happened. We raised the uh, apogee. We raised the apogee a little bit. Okay, about 54 kilometers actually. Okay, so the orbit period's different, and it's going to take a little longer to get around back to the scene of the crime where it did the delta v. Okay, so let's see what happens. It goes to apogee about 12 hours later, and then comes back to perigee. Keep in mind the target's still wandering around in this uh, black orbit black line orbit, and it is uh, same orbit period. It, it didn't do anything and it's hanging on to its rec frame. So it's looking at the motion of the chaser relative to itself, the target, okay? All right, let's switch to the relative view. Here we go, there we are. Okay, so 260 kilometers positive on the I bar, that's the I bar, and we pop the throttle. Well, something really cool happens. It starts going forward and climbing. Okay, see that right there? But after about one sixth of the period to get back to here, one orbit period, it crosses overhead and it is heading this way. It is, it is heading in the negative eye. Why? Because it's higher, it's going slower. This is motion relative to the target. So what happens is, 12 hours later, it's at this apogee point, geo plus 54, see that right there? That point is this point, see that? And then when it comes down, it descends, speeding up a little bit. In this case, it goes whizzing by the target. Uh, they, they don't collide, pretend like they don't collide. This is one rev later, it hopped back 260 kilometers. Isn't that cool? Well, we didn't hit the target, and it does it again. It keeps moving 260 kilometers back. That's two days. So see, we went from here to here in two days, but we followed this nifty phasing orbit relative motion path, okay? Uh, some people call it the V-bar hop. Uh, uh, you can call it what you may, but at 24 hours, you're here, and then 48 hours, you're here, okay? So, that was a positive one meter per second delta V. That one teeny weeny uh, delta V resulted in 24 hours later, we hop back 260 kilometers. In this case, we're right next to the target. Hello, target. And uh, that's the apogee there. And that's the apogee there. You see that? Let's press on. What happens if, again, we are now uh, behind the target 
but we're going to set it up 520 kilometers behind, okay, behind the target, okay? So we're moving this way. Everybody's moving in this little formation. That's about two-thirds of a degree in uh, arc, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to tap the brakes a little bit. We're going to fire the thruster this way and take some velocity out. So here we go. That, that's what it sounds like, okay? Negative one meter per second delta V. So that 3.07 kilometers per second, we took out one meter per second. We slowed it down. Well, as you know, that's going to create a, a new orbit. We changed the eccentricity and we lowered this altitude, circular altitude. We created a new perigee right here, which is about 54 kilometers below. So now the chaser is going to be on this blue trajectory. Now target's still wandering along, doing its thing, and it's got the rick frame. Everything's cool there. But what happens is, watch this. We're in the chaser, we're in a, 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 a lower orbit period, right? Um, so what happens is it drops down to perigee 12 hours later, that's that point, and then it pops up here and, and kisses the, the V bar, the I bar, okay? It comes up and says, hey, I'm back at my original altitude. Remember, you took some energy out. So it's at 12 hours, it's here. I mean, 24 hours, it's here. Now it comes back down and comes back up and bonk, there you are, right by the target, okay? So what happened here? Took energy out, got the perigee. So we're going to descend to the perigee, but we're going to come back to the altitude we started at, apogee, that's 24 hours. Then whoop, down to the um, perigee, that's 36 hours. And then 48 hours later, hey, target, here I am, I caught up to you. This is a phasing orbit, all due to the fact that you did this teeny weeny throttle bump. You, you, you um, took energy out, you put on the brakes. For you pilots, you, you put out the speed brake or you retarded the throttle, something like that. But this is space, it's different, okay? See that wonk, wonk, isn't that cool? So that's what we call a phasing orbit. Got the inertial view, relative view, so now you're really smart in this area of what happens if I do a, a, a prograde positive or a retrograde negative delta V in the in track direction. Okay, feel free to, to freeze, the, freeze the screen and study this and get it straight in your mind. Inertial view, relative view, they're all the same. It's from whose perspective you're looking at it. All right, we'll wrap it up with a little chit chat on cross track. Cross track is decoupled from the in track radial motion. So that makes this really easy. What we now have illustrated here is the target and the I vector, the in track. So that's the direction it's going, right? And then the cross track, which is this direction positive. It's it obeys the right hand rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to position the chaser behind the target. So everybody's moving in that direction, right? And we're going to do a, cro a positive cross-track burn. So there's the thruster. It's pointed off to uh, the right, if you will. And that's going to create this teeny-weeny one meter per second additional delta V vector this way, okay? Psh, that way, okay? So what we do is we fire the thruster. Psh, there it goes. And uh, we're going this way, all right? So uh, what is going to happen? Well, I'm going to show you two views of what happens. We're going to go through the orbit, look at where it is, quarter orbit, half orbit, three quarter orbit, and then ask you, where is it one orbit later? Okay, we did not change the orbit period. Depending upon where we made the burn, we either change inclination and or right ascension of the node, the two angular elements, right ascension of ascending node. Okay, so let's look at what happens. Target moving along. This is the IC components of the Rick frame. Well, what happened is it swung out in the positive C direction, 13 kilometers. How do you like that? Okay, so it it moved to the side. It didn't close on us though. Okay, so it moved that way. Half a rev later, it's back. 
So it went bonk back this way. And there it is. Okay. It's crossing still behind. No, no, no creeping up or anything. Three quarter. That's uh, 18 hours. Look, it went swung out this way. Now it's 13 kilometers to the negative cross track direction. How about that? Okay. So where does it end up one orbit later? Well, guess what? It comes back here. That's where it is right there. And it just goes bonk, 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 bonk back and forth synchronize with the orbit. Let's look at this in a sense of a timeline, and I think it'll help you. All right, so this, this little frame is a little different. This is not a rec frame, but it illustrates positive C down. I tried to keep it consistent with the other one, and negative C up, okay? So here's what happens. We're, we're here, and this is a time, time since delta V, quarter orbit, half orbit, three quarter orbit, one orbit, six hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, okay? I'm gonna do a positive one meter per second cross track. So the thrusters pointed in that direction. We go, we fire the engine, that's what they sound like. And uh, boom, you got this little teeny weeny delta V vector. What's the result in motion? Well, it's a sine wave. It goes like this. It swings out 13 kilometers, and then it comes back through, so it's it's right behind us in the I bar, and it's zeroed out in the C. Then it swings out on the other side, three quarter orbit later, it's 13 kilometers this side, and then it comes there, okay? So guess what? It's gonna keep doing that. It's gonna keep doing that. It's like fish tailing, okay? So there you have it, that, that's cross track. So we've looked at the Rick frame, we looked at radial delta V, in track delta V, and cross-track delta V. There's some really nifty equations behind all this, but this is the basics of natural motion in a relative sense. Kepler's still running the show, but you're looking at the whole situation from the target in the RIC frame, okay? Well, take care, I hope this made sense, and I bet you're more awesome now. Explain it to your family, explain it to your friends. America needs to know this.